All right, guys, it's December 15th. I'm running a little bit late. It's 45 degrees, uh, so it's about 25 degrees warmer than the last time I hunted. This is not exactly what we want for mid-December to put these deer on their feet in the food, but you know what? It is what it is. I'm going to enjoy a sit where I don't freeze my tail off and actually probably won't have to even wear my heavy jacket tonight. So uh, I'm going to head into our oat plot in a pine tree and see what is shaking. I'm kind of thinking green tonight is why I'm going there. We got a fresh picked cornfield, so anything moving from the west towards the east may try to maybe feed through those oats, hit a little bit of green before they get to this fresh cut corn. I was just picked in the last, uh, I don't know, five days or so. So that's the plan. I'm gonna check a couple trail cameras on my way in and we'll be up in a stand shortly and hopefully before dark, something moves through, gives us a shot. So let's get after it. to shoot and well three of them showed up couldn't quite pull it off on that first one 
She's the one I wanted. <laughs> the big double throw patch doe. She's the one I wanted, but she got a little spooky down here and kind of ran off. She was still in bow range, but I knew the other two were coming behind her, so I just set the camera up and I said, this first one that, that comes through, I'm gonna shoot. Happened to be the biggest of the three, I believe. She got a little spooky when she was right down under me. I'm only, I'm gonna guess 12 feet up in this tree, not very high. And uh, fortunately, she didn't spook too bad. She stopped right there, it gave me a perfect hole at about eight or nine yards. And I'm not gonna pass that shot up. That's his chip shot, his chip shot gets. She ran out here to about 60 yards and stopped, and then kind of did a death run over here. And I saw her do a circle and go down right in these pines over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and climb down and go get her recovered, and then um, figure out how I'm gonna get her out of here. <laughs> Spitfire Triple X. Light him up, baby. So, standing out here where I shot this doe, just grabbed my arrow, um, clean past through. The ground's frozen, so it didn't really stick in the ground. It just hit the ground and kind of laid down. But, um, kind of just give you guys a look at where I was sitting. I was up in that pine tree right there, is where I was at. Uh, eight or nine yard shot. You can't beat that. There's the food plot over there. So, got a nice sunset tonight. It's getting cold out here. So we're gonna go find this deer real quick. I saw where she fell up here, so I'm not even sure I'm gonna follow the blood. I'm just gonna walk up there and see if we can't grab her real quick before it gets dark. Oh yeah, big old doe. All right guys, well, we are gonna try to keep this short and sweet because I need to get home. This was supposed to be a quick hunt tonight. My wife's at home, not only with our kids, but my nieces and nephews as well. She's probably going crazy and wondering where I'm at. So as you guys saw, I already recovered this doe uh, tonight. <clears throat> this is probably gonna, hopefully not be, but it will probably be the last year I shoot uh, for the 2018 season. You know, we got about 30 days left here in Illinois to hunt, uh, but with uh, the holidays coming up, work, uh, ATA show, just a lot of obligations going on. Uh, I'm not sure how many more sits I'm going to be able to get out between now and the end of the year. So most likely this will be my, my last year of the year and heck of a way to end the season. First kill with the verdicts. Man, I, I love this bow. I know everybody you know, hates when we talk about product, but I, I got to be honest with you, I do absolutely love this bow. Uh, and I wasn't going to pass up an eight or nine yard shot on a big, big trophy doe like this. The head on this doe is enormous. Uh, I have killed bucks with smaller heads than this doe before. So this is, this is a trophy and a great way to end the year uh, on a high note, a perfect shot, good footage, good hunt. Um, man, just everything went right tonight. So we, I appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, thanks for watching along with my season. Guys, keep watching. We got another month or so left. The rest of the team is out there still hitting it hard, trying to fill some of those late season tags. So, you know, if you guys haven't filled a tag yet, uh, even if it's just with a doe, keep hunting hard, keep hunting smart. Don't cut any corners. Uh, you know, don't start getting lazy. Uh, there's still plenty of opportunities out there to fill a tag. So again, guys, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time right here. Bow hunter die, baby. Good afternoon, bow hunter die fans. It's uh, Sunday, December 9th, and I am headed out to fight the good fight. It's Illinois' muzzleloader season, and I'm gonna be trying to kill a deer with a bow today. Um, on the way to my farm, I thought I'd give you guys a quick update and a pretty serious story I wanted to share with you. So last night, I was hunting this same farm and uh, actually ended up slipping coming out of the tree last night after dark. and feeling pretty fortunate today for our friends over at Hunter Safety Systems. I did have a lifeline in that tree and it managed to catch me so I didn't hit the ground. Uh, but it didn't stop me from wrenching my shoulder pretty bad when I tried to stop the fall. And um, went in this morning to the doctor, had some x-rays done and had him take a look at it. I apparently got severe inflammation and sprain of the rotator cuff on my left hand side. So um, I've I mentioned it in a few past episodes guys to wear the harnesses and the lifelines but it all becomes very real when that happens to you. 
you know, I've been climbing trees and hunting out of tree stands for as long as I can remember. And uh, it's funny, I'm 38 years old right now and it finally happened and luckily I had the right stuff on and it prevented me from getting hurt bad. So anyhow, I am headed out to that primary farm that I hunt just a few miles from the house. I'm almost there right now. Uh, I'm definitely running a bit late. So we've got to rush, get into the tree and once we get there, we'll give you guys a few more updates. Don't go anywhere. Well, I'm in, a little bit later than I'd like, but at least I'm here and I'm safe. So the spot I'm hunting, guys, basically it's a little pinch point in between two big blocks of timber. And the farmer didn't plant this little open area this year. So I put, I don't know, probably about an acre of Heartland's Rack Maker Extreme in here, which is primarily oats. And it's pretty green right now. I had a lot of pictures of deer in here over the past few days. and. Uh, that number one buck that I've got on this farm, I talked about him a few episodes ago. I call him Half Rack. Um, he's been in here quite a bit. And uh, got pictures this morning off the Stealth Wireless cams of him about 150 yards east of here. And, um, you know, he's alive and well. And unless he got killed in the last few hours, he's probably in this block of timber right now. So we're going to settle in, enjoy the evening, be thankful for the fact that I'm alive in here in one piece. Um, you know, if he shows up tonight, uh, I did end up bringing that new 10 point stealth NXT crossbow tonight just because my shoulder's not, it's not good. <laughs> and, uh, that thing is bad medicine for white tails. So if he comes out tonight, we're going to try and take our first deer with a crossbow. Let's see. Maybe tonight's the night. Well, that was definitely half rack he's still out there with those does right now he's just sniffing around him as they're picking up leftover soybeans from when the farmer came out and picked that field but oh, boy he's a great deer he's not giant inches wise but he's a big old mature deer i'm guessing he's at least five and a half years old and uh it's funny to watch their behavior patterns from four and a half to five and a half and how much they smarten up um, that's actually the very first time that i've actually seen them during daylight Good afternoon, bow hunter die fans. It's Sunday, December 16th, and uh, the conditions are pretty much terrible out here. <laughs> it's way too warm, but uh, we at least have a little bit of a high pressure system out here, and I figured you can't kill a buck from the couch, so it's better than sitting at home. I'm gonna come out here anyhow and try and give it another shot, so. Uh, I'm running very late right now, it's almost 2.30. Uh, I gotta get you know in this tree and get settled as quick as I can, so stick with us, don't go anywhere. Uh, we'll give you a few more updates once we get in the lone wolf. Well, we're in. We've got a little bit of wind cover, too, to hopefully cover up any noise we made getting in here. It's kind of an aggressive spot. It seems like every time we've got a straight west wind, he tends to bed on the eastern side of this timber block. It makes a lot of sense, but it's that time of year you better start playing the cards that you got in your hand or you may not even have a chance to. So we're going to get a little bit more aggressive every hunt that we have from here until the end of the year.
Matt. Well, that was half rack, guys. <laughs> I am so, so happy right now. I've never hunted this hard in my life for a deer. It's December 16th, and uh, it's crazy to think, you know, October, November, and half of December, two and a half months I've been after that deer. And it finally happened. I've never hunted so late into the season since moving to the Midwest without having a chance at a good deer, and I finally connected the dots tonight. So, unfortunately, the bad news is, is he just stepped out of the frame on the camera. And uh, I'm awful disappointed in that, but uh, I'm still very, very thankful to have had a chance to be able to take that deer. So, um, was not able to review the footage, um, but I'm fairly certain I absolutely drilled him. So we're gonna get down there and go take a look at that bolt and uh, see what the crime scene tells us. Just got back to the house and uh, I do not have good news. So I snuck out into the field just far enough to be able to pull the bolt and it is, clean as a whistle. To tell you guys that I'm disappointed would be a colossal understatement. Um, just a massive failure on my part. Uh, it's just not in the cards it seems like this year. <laughs> to be two and a half months into the season and not have an opportunity to mature buck and then all of a sudden for it to all kind of happen tonight and I get a shot at my number one buck but I miss the shot on film number one and I completely miss the animal number two. Um, just incredibly disappointed so. Uh, I guess if there's a silver lining to the cloud, it's that he is alive and I have an opportunity to try and fix what happened tonight. And, uh, you know, I will be back after it just as soon as I can. And, uh, you know, it's hard to tell if he'll abandon the area or not. He definitely was spooked pretty good. Fairly certain he knows what happened. And uh, he's a lot smarter now than he was a few hours ago. But uh, we've got a little over a month left in the season and I've got a lot of food on that property. And he's been real consistent in there. So I'm hopeful that he won't abandon it and we'll have another crack at him. So. Hopefully next time you guys see me, I'll be sitting behind them. But uh, until then, guys, thanks for watching. Bowhunter die. Mr. Face Paint Boy now. I mean, originally in the year That's he was... Face Paint Man. Okay, boy. almost 40 now. The bottom line is he was making fun of everyone for wearing face paint. I don't do that anymore. I remember him saying that to me. And now suddenly... Same. That's He's a got far the face cry from out. making fun of people, Grab. You were but making fun of people. I felt like after my last few hunts that I had that were horrible, and I wasn't even seeing deer, I needed a little change of pace. It was a warm day, so I felt like I didn't want need to wear my face mask to keep me warm because I'm kind of a sissy if about Justin's that. If Justin's doing it, it's cool. But when he stops, oh. then everyone else is not cool. That's I didn't say, well, you've never been cool. Oh, that's true. As for everybody else, that's I mean, I, I don't know. But hey, it brought me some good luck. I was able to put my third whitetail of the year on the ground, made a perfect shot on her, which felt great. Hey, anytime you can I shoot a deer with a bow it's and make good. a good shot, it feels good. I don't care what Mr. Hey, if Justin's Nancy happy, over I'm happy. I'm not negative. I just, I'm, I'm, okay, I am negative. I hurt my back. Todd's I'm dying cranky. in pain. I am dying in pain, right no one can tell. You know, as for Matt, <sighs> uh, man, he's been hunting hard all year. Finally gets an opportunity at his number one buck. Messes up the camera work, then messes up the shot on top of that. So it was a definitely Miller. rough night. It was a rough week for Matt, right? I mean, because on top of that, you've got the slip and fall, which, right. you know, Todd, I know you wanted to talk about that a little bit. Well, I mean, at some point, that's going to happen to all of us, right? It's just a matter of time. I mean, climbing trees, it's dangerous. I mean, quite frankly, I'm surprised sure. how much tree climbing I've done that I haven't you know, when I was younger, had more of a serious fall. I mean, it took me almost four years ago and I had that one accident. Mm -hmm. It was the most stupidest thing where my saw cut the strap going around the tree on the actual foot that I was on and I, and I fell. It was just dumb yeah. luck, but it can happen. I mean, you just, you gotta wear your gear, guys. Wear yeah, it. definitely. So, you know, fortunate for Matt, he didn't get seriously hurt. He's still out there hunting. Got a lot of season left here in Illinois. Hopefully he'll get another crack at one. Uh, so guys, next up, we are going to take a look at trophy photos that were sent in for this week's episode. Avery Ball. Benner Efford. Chris. D. Noon. Chris Demarest. Luke Seedorf. And Shane Weller. Hey guys, those are some great trophies. Remember, if you want to see yourself right here on Bowhunt or Die, don't forget the hashtag Bowhunt or Die. Pretty simple. Yep. Justin, winner. Winner, winner. 
chicken dinner. Oh, as Todd here, says. Avery, I'm sorry to give you this information, but look. Justin even said, make sure you smile. He even drew a little smiley yeah, face. If you don't be. smile, I guess you just can't win. So, Avery, unfortunately, you did not win. <laughs> I think Justin and I both decided this week that we were giving it to Shane Weller. Yeah, congratulations Big to buck. Shane. Looks Heck good. of a buck. Good photo. So, congratulations to Shane. Make sure you get your information to us. We will get you that Pine Ridge Archery gift pack. Sent out what? You sounded like a robot there for a minute. It was like just rattling it off. I've said it a thousand times now, <laughs> so that's the way it goes. So thanks to everybody for sending in their trophy photos for this week's episode. Uh, guys, back guess remedies. If, if, if you have any back remedies, my sciatic nerve is killing me. I'd love to hear about them. I'm dying. Amputation. I'm dying. Oh, okay. <laughs> Lots of drugs? Oh, I don't know. Man. So, Hurts. yeah, if you have remedies for Todd, make sure you post them, guys. Christmas is coming up, so Merry Christmas to everybody out there. Hope you guys have a wonderful holiday season, and we will see you next week right here on Bowhunter Dive. For more exciting action, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and receive live updates from our team members as well as the latest happenings in the bowhunting and archery world. Be sure to share your photos, stories, and experiences as well. And don't forget to pick up your official bowhunting.com and bowhunter die gear by visiting bowhunting.com forward slash gear. We have a full selection of hats, shirts, decals, wristbands, and much more. Avery Ball, Chris Denoon, 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 and Luke Seedorf. Yep. Hefford. How would, how would you say this one? Let me help me. Let me help you. Which one? <laughs> number four. Well. Demo rest. Number four? Demo Democrat. Rest? <laughs> Demo <laughs> That's Democrat. Chris Demarest. No, I want to say Demarest. Demarest. Denoon? This guy's name is Denner. Denoon? Denoon. Denoon. Okay. Denner.